Do you enjoy ladybug themed DIYs? Because if you do, today's video is for you. I've got a front door sign, I've got two decor pieces, and I've got a watercolor tutorial that you don't want to miss. So let's stop talking about it and let's start being about it and let's get crafting. On this channel, I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. We are starting off with a Dollar Tree wood round sign. I'm taking the jute twine off and I'm also going to take the paper off that's on the front. I don't think that there was any glitter on it, but I just like to take the paper off. So I'm taking this vintage, I think it's a rally rag, <laughs> um, rally towel or whatever from the Texas Rangers. And I've wet it really well and I'm just going to let it soak. And I let it soak for a bit and now I'm taking this little razor. I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to be using that to scrape off the, where did I go? Oh, there I am. To scrape off the paper and it comes up so easy once you let it soak. Now the, in the middle part, it's not coming off as easy because it's not wet enough. And so I'm just taking off what will come off easily. I'm not really trying to overwork it or anything like that. And then I'll just place that rally rag back on top of it. You can use the washcloth, you can use a whatever you want to use. I'm just gonna put that back on top of it to soak it some more, and now it's done. Now you can see that there are some watermarks, water stains where the, the board had gotten wet, but you know, that's okay, it's gonna be covered up with paint. So I'm just using some painter's tape to kind of section off where I'm gonna paint, and I'm laying down some scrap pieces of copy paper because we use copies, we we have a lot of extra copy paper at work, like copies that just are going to be, you know, either recycled or trashed or whatever. And so I like to reuse them in other ways. And so I'm using it to kind of protect my little cutting mat there. I'm painting the top half with Waverly Chalk Paint in the color ink. And I'm just going around and I'm trying to be careful to get on the edge Sometimes when you paint, you, you can't get quite to the edge. Anyway, I'm just trying to make sure that I get to the edge. And then I'm just painting it and giving it a really good coat. And then I'm taking, I think this is Anita's paint. I think it's True Red is the color. And I'm going to paint that on the lower half, just squeezing a little bit out. And use my paintbrush to give it a good coat. This board does soak in the paint a little bit, so it's not... If you want it darker, if you want a more truer color, I guess, you could give it a couple coats of paint, but I just coated, uh, gave it one coat of paint, and I'm happy with that. And that's dry now, so I pulled back that painter's tape to reveal the nice clean edges, and I'm going to reposition the painter's tape so that I can paint that stripe that's not painted. What I should have done is maybe painted the whole thing white, <laughs> but I didn't do that. And so um, this is how I'm doing it. I am using Waverly chalk paint in the color Snow White. And just getting a little bit of paint on my paintbrush and swiping across. One of the things you need to be careful of when you're trying to, like when you're using painter's tape in this way, is to not force the paint under or to the, the edge of the tape, just kind of going across it. That works best so you can have that crisp line. Once it's done, pull everything up. Where did I, where do I keep going? <laughs> there I, and then pull the second piece up. I have cut out a decal with my Cricut and it just says hello, it's very simple, but I did it in white vinyl. And I'm going to attach it up in that black area. What I feel like I should have done was made the black area like bigger, but I didn't. <laughs> so here we are. And then I'm taking that Waverly chalk paint in the color ink again and my round sponge dauber brush and I'm making circles to make it look kind of like a ladybug. I did add a small messy bow to the top and I glued, hot glued a button in the middle and I added some little dots down there, just kind of randomly. I think I kind of maybe should have put something in the white, but you tell me in the comments below what you think. For this one, you're gonna need two wood circles the same size and then a smaller wood circle. So what I'm doing here and this was, there may have been an easier way to do it, but I didn't, I couldn't figure it out. What I'm trying to do is kind of 
not cut it in half, but cutting it in half probably would have been easier. I'm trying to cut out kind of like a um, half moon shape, I guess, because it's going to be the head of a ladybug. And I'm working at it with my little X-Acto knife and working at it and working at it. <laughs> it was really hard to do. I end up taking some pliers and my little snippers and here we go. See, I'm taking the pliers and I'm going to hold it and then I'm going to snip um, part off so that I can use it. I mean, it was a little harder, a little more work than, <laughs> than I was like, dang, that was a lot. But for the second circle, I'm going to cut it in half. And I'm just marking where I'm going to cut. And I'm just going to use some scissors to carefully cut so that it doesn't split or anything like that. And then I'm taking some masking tape and I'm putting it sticky side up with two little pieces on the end. And I'm putting all of those ladybug pieces down on that tape so that I can paint them. And this just makes it easier to paint because then you're not having to hold stuff and get it all over your fingers. And I'm taking that Waverly chalk paint in the color ink again. And I'm going to be painting that one and the one next to it black. And I'm going to be painting the little wings red. Very easy to do. I had this little sign. It was two, two tag signs together. And it says relax. And it's got like embossed so I decided to just flip it over and use the other side I couldn't decide if I was going to sand it fill it in with some you know um what do you call it that stuff the joint compound <laughs> I couldn't decide if I was going to do that or not anyway I thought no let's just flip it over and I am painting this with Waverly chalk paint in the color snow white once that is dry I'm taking a sharpie pen and I'm just creating some kind of like faux shiplap and I'm just making lines uh, approximately one inch apart all the way down or all the way up, <laughs> whichever way you look at it. I'm going to take some red with white polka dot ribbon and I'm just going to kind of thread that through the hole and I'm going to pull those through. I forget what kind of knot this is called, but whatever kind of knot is it's called, that's what I'm doing. And I'm just going to leave it simple like that. I mean, I guess I could like make a bow for it, but I'm not really a bow kind of person. And I'm knotting it just so that it stays secure. I'm taking some wood glue that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm putting a little bit down all across the bottom there. And I'm gonna take a strip of that red with the white polka dot ribbon and put it across the bottom. And I'll kind of let it set up before I cut it. And I'm gonna add some wood glue to the black wood circle there and place that sort of in the center <laughs> you know I measure with my heart I don't really measure that often but then I'm taking that little piece that I struggled to get cut and that's actually going to be the head of the ladybug and there was a little bit of a gap there but that's okay it all turns out fine I'm just going to take that um oh I'm going to add the um dots onto the ladybug's back first and then I'm going to put some glue down so that I can attach those two red wings, one to each side. See, that looks cute. And I'm going to draw these little antenna. And I didn't add any legs. Oh, there's my head. <laughs> now I'm snipping off the ribbon because it's, it's drying up now. It's set up enough that it's not going to move or anything like that. And here's how it turned out. Very simple, but also very cute. And I think it would look good on a tiered tray. Just kind of like another little piece of decor along the ladybug theme. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. I wanted to mention that I have a crafting group on Facebook called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. The link is going to be in the description box below. I sure hope you check it out and join. And if you do join, post something that you're working on so we can encourage you on your creative journey as well. I found this house, this wood house shape on mega clearance at Michael's. I think it was like 90% off and couldn't pass that up. <laughs> so I got it and I am carefully painting just the face of this house with Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. What I do for the sides and the back is I stain it with Waverly um, wax in the color antique and 
yeah so I don't show that though but anyway that's what I do so I'm just trying to be careful so that I don't get paint on the edges of the house I cut out a decal with my Cricut that says live life in full bloom and just I'm, I'm attaching that to the front of the house carefully pulling it back then I'm gonna take a white paint pen and make just like a simple little leaves of a flower petals of a flower not leaves petals <laughs> petals of the flower and I'm going to take a green paint pen and make the stems of the flowers and a little bit of grass at the bottom and I'm going to take a yellow paint pen and put little dots in the center of the flowers then I'm taking a red paint pen and I'm going to draw like a half um, circle shape and that's going to be the ladybug at the bottom and I'm just using that paint pen to fill it in. I think I go back with some regular red paint again to kind of just make sure that it's coated well. And I take a little white paint pen and just make some little dots like, I guess kind of like a trail. I'm not exactly sure why I did that. <laughs> I thought it looked cute. And then I did make a little simple like shoestring bow with that red with white polka dot ribbon. And that's it. I think it turned out super cute. Now I did go back and kind of outline the ladybug with a white paint pen to give it some highlight so you can kind of notice it more, but I just think it turned out super cute. You guys let me know what you think in the comments below. Here is a ladybug watercolor tutorial. Full transparency here, this is a recreation of a tutorial that Andrea Nelson did. I'll have a link to her information below as well as to a direct link to the tutorial and y'all should check her out she's one of my favorite watercolor artists and I just love all the things that she creates she's so fun to watch so on this part here you're just taking your watercolor paint and you have to spray them with water to activate them and you dip your brush in the water and then wipe off the excess and then do it um, <laughs> dip it in the paint and then I did put some in a little pan as you see me doing there and that's just so I can kind of mix some different colors add a little bit more red if I need to and things like that and you're just making blobs these are just like they're not like perfect shapes and it's okay if there's some white showing it's okay if they're not perfect it's okay if they're not symmetrical it's all totally going to be fine because we're going to go back with a fine line pen later and kind of zhuzh them up a little bit so just put down some blobs wherever your heart desires you do it the way that you feel like it looks good and Lacey over at Rebel Unicorn Crafts will say, either let it dry or make it dry. And so I'm choosing to make it dry and I'm using my heat tool to do that. And I'm just kind of going over and not staying in one place too much. Then I'm going back with a brush tip pen. And I think I got this one from either, either Hobby Lobby or Michaels, or maybe I got it online you know, on Amazon. And so I am just outlining the shapes of the ladybugs. And again, this is, see, this is where it didn't have to be perfect, that first part, because you're kind of like making it illustrative or expressive. Um, and this is my favorite style of watercolor painting. And so I'm adding the spots. Now, I think ladybugs usually have about seven spots. And so I think I have to go back in and add some spots to a couple of these afterwards. But I add the little, like there's a little small circle oval I guess at the top for the right there and then you add another little smaller circle for the little head and then you just add some antenna and you just like swoosh out your pen like that and make little antenna and it, it's just it's so easy and this turns out really pretty cute now ladybugs do have legs and you they have six legs I didn't really know that or didn't remember that, but they do. That's what Andrea said. And I believe her. Why, why wouldn't I believe her? Why would she lie to me? So I'm taking a smaller micron pen, probably an 01, and I'm just adding six legs to three on each side for each ladybug. Now for some embellishment, I'm just adding some greenery. I'm putting in some kind of like stems, I guess, or a vine maybe kind of look. And in a second here, I'll start adding some leaf shapes. Am I the best at leaves right now? No, I'm not, but it's okay. It's all going to be, it all works out. 
it, it'll be fine. And so I'm just kind of adding in some greenery because to break up the, the red, black, and white, I guess, and taking a little bit more green, kind of mixing up some different colors, and then I'm just adding some leaf shapes. And that, that's really it. I was going to try to explain more, but that's really it. You can add different leaves. You don't even have to be green leaves. It could be like purple leaves if you wanted to. Or if you didn't want to add like greenery at all, you could just do some other background or just leave the background plain. You know, you do you, boo. You know what I'm saying? You, this is your art. This is your expression, your creation. And you know, I'm just trying to show you what I'm doing. I finished adding leaves and vines and now it's time to pull back that tape and leave that crisp border. It's my favorite part. This is how it turned out and y'all, I, um, I love it. I do feel like I need to go back or I want to go back and add some more greenery, like maybe some bigger leaves or something like that. A little bit more color to it, but that's just me. And that's the fun thing about creating is that you can make it your own and fit your own style. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more watercolor tutorials, be sure and leave me a comment. And let me know what you'd like to see because um, I plan on <laughs> filming some more tutorial recreations coming soon for you guys. And I'm just having a lot of fun exploring this different medium of creating and crafting. So I hope you enjoy it too. Thank y'all so much for joining me in my studio today. I really do appreciate the company while I craft and create. And I hope you enjoyed the projects that I shared. I am going to leave a link to a couple other videos that you might enjoy over here, I think. And you can check those out. Also, um, let me know what you think about the watercolor. And if you have any suggestions on future themes for my DIY videos. And yeah, I appreciate the feedback. So don't forget, if you want to follow me here on YouTube, we're over on Instagram or TikTok or Facebook. My handle is Our Gray House, but just don't follow me in real life though because that's creepy. <laughs> Bye!